it's Jess from Minerva. Today I'm going to do a sew along of the Freedom Dress from Wardrobe by Me. It's a free and easy buffet style tiered dress. You can have three tiers, two tiers, elasticated sleeve, a cuff three quarter rolled up sleeve or a flutter by sleeve where it's just loose. You can have a tie or just the narrow collar band. It's got a grandad style collar on it and it is billed as an intermediate pattern and the bust is 30 to 48.5 but there's lots and lots of ease so you need to make sure that you measure yourself and then you measure the finished garment measurements. The fabric that I'm using is a Minerva exclusive viscose. This one's called Bubbles. The bubbles are quite big I put that print against me you'll see the sort of colour motifs are about a hand size bubbles are sort of pan queen size really bright colours all the colours all the movement and the fabric drape that's needed to make the tears the skills you will learn from this pattern are to add a collar, to add a button band, to make buttonholes, to effectively gather your fabric to make the tiers and to put in inseam pockets. I'll show you how to do all of those today but first I'm going to show you how to cut out. Um, a few cutting out tips, you need to have viscose all on the table if you can, especially because this is cut from a three metre length so the fabric will be dropping down off the table and stretching out and it can be a little bit of a mover and a shaker on the cutting table so try and get it all up onto the table or if you're able to cut out on the floor. Use sharp scissors for viscose because it's uh, floppy so you want to get a first cut first time so you're not peeling the fabric away from the paper piece. When interfacing a piece of viscose I interface the whole piece and then cut out my shape because if you're trying to cut out two uh, slim intricate collar shapes one out of interfacing and one out of viscose the chances that you get them the same are very slim so it's easier if you make a layered piece of fabric in the first instance. The pattern is quite long with lots of stages so in order to help me sew along with you I have overlocked all of my pieces previously, interfaced everything previously and I've got all my notches and markings so that I can sew along with you and show you the trickier parts so that you can have success with the freedom dress pattern. To use the pattern is up to you. It comes on firm paper so you can trace off your pattern size using Swedish pattern paper. You can um, make a sandwich layer of the pattern and carbon tracing paper and your fabric and a serrated wheel carbon copy your pattern off for the size that you want or today because I'm not sure about this pattern yet I've used a fold over technique so I've cut out the whole size and then I've folded over the size that I want and then I'll see what this dress is like and then I might turn it out one more if I want to change the pattern in places one of the really nice things about this pattern is for each view there is a picture of the dress so if you need the sleeve piece, you may recognise this as a sleeve piece, but you think, I have to keep going back and seeing which view you're on. This is the view and these are the sleeves and I quite like that feature on the pattern. Another thing about cutting out is in the instruction booklet, there are no cutting out diagrams. So if you usually follow a uh, cutting layout, there aren't any in this pattern. So just be aware that when you're laying out your fabric you're going to have enough before you start cutting. The word mirrored is used on these patterns which um, I've not seen before so it says cut two sleeves mirrored which means two sleeves on a folded fabric. Of course if you're doing lots of pattern matching or you've got a really slippy fabric you may be cutting the pieces in single layers in which case you need to mirror or flip your pattern pieces.
As an intermediate sew today, I won't be showing every tiny, tiny detail. And an example of that is step one, which is to make darts in the front pieces. So I've already done that because I'm assuming you can make darts. Make sure the darts are in the right place, even though it's a free and easy top. You don't want darts coming up over your bust and you don't really want them going under and making a sort of balloon shape on the top. So add darts to your bust pieces. That's a right front and a left front. I'd rather spend more time showing the more complex parts of this pattern, so now we're going to have a look at the button band. You will have two button band pieces per side, so you've got two for one side and then you'll have two for the other side and you want to make sure that you've got the right pairs that match each other and the first stage is to match them up so you've got them right sides together and then you're going to press one placket seam allowance to the wrong side so it's this is a one centimeter seam allowance throughout this pattern which is a little bit smaller than i usually work with but i I kind of quite like it because I don't have to keep trimming out and I'm going to sew the two plackets together right sides together and then trim out some of the bulk so I'm going to pin it here so that I can keep that nice press that I've already made and there is a gentle kink here and I'm just going to mark that with a pin so that when I'm under the machine, I know where I need to just sort of pivot my sewing round. I've also put a tiny little clip where I need opposite, where I need to start curving, and that will help me when I turn it over. So the first part of sewing this top of the dress is to sew the two plackets together, right sides facing with the seam allowance folded up on one side. When that's sewn, you're then going to trim out one side to reduce the bulk, because in one of these button bands, you're going to need to sew some buttonholes. So we don't want that to be too chunky under the machine when we make our buttonholes. We also have that slight kink there that turns out to the collar band. So now your button band should look like this. A raw, a sort of raw edge layer seam, tiny bit layered on top, your stitch line, your fold over, and then your button band underneath. Next, I'm going to just a little V shape out there opposite where I had that other V so I have a V here a V here and that will mean that I can press that out and I'll have that sort of nice curved shape that I'm looking for to take me up for the collar band Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is to press the seam allowance towards that folded edge. And you need to be quite accurate because it's a really narrow placket. It's not very big. So we need to make, it's only, it's only this big. So we need to make sure that that fits. Inside the placket. Now it's pressed, I should have the inside of the placket, which is the folded one, and the outside of the placket, which is a full one, and that little bit that's overlapping here is the seam allowance to add it onto the blouse. So this is what we're aiming for. We're aiming for this placket to be attached with no stitching showing from the right side and then from the wrong side you'll have two rows of stitching, one that's an understitch and one that's holding the outer edge of the band on. And this is how it works. So this is your front piece 
and now we're going to match up the raw edge with the top and be accurate here because you want to be able to have the same thickness throughout your placket. When you get to that V shape that you trip, cut before as a marker, make sure that you're going to match the V shape on the top. And you will have a little ear over in the corner, but that's to facilitate uh, wrapping over the end. And now we're going to take a one centimetre seam allowance all the way down the front. Remember, this isn't a straight seam. This is to here and then a slight kink and then out. And then you'll be able to manipulate this little curve that you've got here. And that will mean... You get that slight leg turn there. When you've sewn on the placket, you will then need a press and you'll be taking all of the seam allowance towards the placket so that we can encase everything inside. Try and get a good press on that sort of little curve that we've been having in mind because that will make sure that you get that leg shape on your front edge. Right so we're going to bring the placket now to the reverse. Everything should be really neat and all folded in. You should be getting that little dog leg there. You'll notice I'll need that clip now that all the little clips that I put along there are making it uh, uh, really flat. I'm going to pin it from the right side and I'm going to use um, my fingers to feel that if I pin right next to the button band that I'm catching the button band on the back because I'm going to stitch this from the front as a stitch in the ditch so I need to make sure that I'm catching the uh, button band from the reverse. I'm just getting that rolling over a little bit so I'm just going to make sure that I've still got the width of my button band and it's time to stitch in the ditch along the front panel. So when you've finished the two button bands you should end up with that lovely curved shape and that very narrow button band to put the very small buttons on you've got a sort of v-neck opening then here at the top next you're going to put the actual buttonholes on ready so that you're not trying to slop a whole dress with all the tiers under your machine while you're trying to put buttonholes on so now's the time to use your automatic button holder and put your button holes on. Step six is to put a collar band on. So once you've attached your front and back pieces together, you need to press the seams open so that you've not got any bulky chunks around the neckline, which will help you get your collar on flat, especially in a viscose because all the little lumps and bumps will show through. These will be ready interfaced and they should have markings so that you can match up uh, notable places on the neck hole to fit the collar band into the correct place. Your collar band will have some notches on, so these notches match up to the shoulders and then you will have some easing to do in between. Another notable thing is that the collar extends one centimetre past the end of the button band. So don't match the button band up exactly with the end because you need the one centimetre seam allowance for adding the upper collar on. So you keep matching the collar around 
behind the shoulder notch and that matches up with the shoulder seam which is why I'm suggesting that you have that nice and flat and your colour extends one centimetre past the end of the button band. So once you've got your main points on then you can start to ease in the rest of the collar. So to ease in it's a sort of hand scale so I'm going to put the collar between my two fingers and, and keep a bit of tension on the collar but I'm going to use my thumb and forefinger to allow the dress fabric to really relax onto the collar so you're keeping the collar tight and you're letting the dress relax collar tight use your thumb to get the dress to relax and you're going to do that all the way around because there we are look i've already eased in shoulder to shoulder along the neck by keeping the one part tight and easing in the, long, the longer length of fabric. We're going to do that all the way around and sew the collar right sides together with a one centimetre seam allowance. The next stage is to trim out the collar. So you trim out the side that has the interfacing because that's the side that's providing the most bulk. You need some really small sharp scissors to do this. Try not to wield a pair of dressmaking scissors at it, it's a bit more delicate than that. And then you're going to press that seam allowance that you've just laid out up towards the collar. So everything is up out of the way and will be hidden inside the collar. To line the collar, you take the second piece and fold up and press the one centimetre seam allowance, a bit like you did on the placket. Put your collar piece on top of your collar, right sides together. You'll have some notches that you can match to help you get it in exactly the right place, but really you want that end to be really super neat so that you've got nice curved ends to your colours. So pin those first. And then match the notches and the centre back so that you can sew your one centimetre along the outer edge of the collar. You can trim that down again. And on the ends, you need to make sure that you've gone right across using that full one centimetre seam allowance. Don't have a stitch in the button band, but it needs to be absolutely parallel to it so that when you turn it out, it just becomes a seamless curve that goes around the collar and then down the button band you don't want a sort of little nipple sticking out there or you don't want it kinking in like that because it was too short so you need it to be really accurate there to get that smooth run from the collar into the button band to get a really professional collar when you press it you don't want any of the under collar rolling forward so by design, you just want to roll one millimetre under to the back. So you sort of pinch the fabric and roll it so that the back has one millimetre less on the folded edge. I'm just pinning them centre. The same here, just keep rolling it between your fingers until you've worked the fabric to the back. And now, because I've got glass head pins, I'm going to press that under the iron and then I can sew down the uh, collar lining. 
you can do that on the sewing machine by having a top stitch all the way around or you can slip stitch that on by hand if you want to just have the collar stand on its own so it depends on the finish that you want top stitching you'll be holding that down with the top stitch slip stitching you won't have any stitching showing from the right side because this fabric is very difficult to find a top stitching thread that doesn't stand out too much I'm going to slip stitch mine down because whatever colour I choose to sew around here um, I, I don't know what colour to choose I, I tried blue I've tried navy I tried yellow and so I'm going to keep my colour band just really nice and flush and let the fabric print do the talking This is finished so now you choose your um, sleeve option from the instructions so there is the one with the tab so you'll need to be placing the tab in the right place using your marking so that you can roll it up and I'm going to make the bishop sleeve with the elasticated cuff. The bishop sleeve has a facing on the inside to use as a casing so normally if you make an elasticated casing you just turn your fabric up twice and you've made a channel for the elastic but because the edge of the bishop sleeve is curved, then you can't turn it up without getting lots of little ripples and creases in it. So the facing makes sure that your sleeve has a really nice shape and that the casing band is really flat. Because the bishop sleeves have a curved edge, then our casing is made, made with a curved facing. So we're going to make the sleeve shape. pin these side sleeves and overlock the edges together to make the sleeve shape. If you, you can make the sleeve with just this sort of fluted um, bishop end but without the elastic in and you'll get um, a looser fit and like this. This view here but we're putting the elastic in because I just wanted to show you this curved facing so you sew the side together and then you're going to sew your casing together and attach them right sides together along the bottom you make the sleeve shape and then you make the facing shape and then you fit the one into the other and then you're going to sew it right sides together and then once you've done that then you can fold it back and you get a curved edge and when it's pressed you'll get a really nice bishop sleeve shape that's curved so when you put your elastic in it you'll get a really nice casing that, that isn't all puckered or anything from the right side don't forget to leave a space open for you to thread your elastic through. So your two sleeves are ready to fit into your top. You can add the elastic to your sleeves at a later date at the end because it needs to be a bit more free flowing for when you're inserting the sleeve. So the elastic and actually the buttons are the last finishing touches. It's time to insert the sleeves. They have a row of easing stitches around the sleeve head so you can put your stitch length on four and put a little row just inside the seam allowance and you need to match the notches of course. If you're an intermediate sewer you'll be happy to do that. So I have the top wrong side out, the sleeve right side out, I've got the single front notch facing me and I've got the top facing me. So I'm going to insert the sleeves and match the notches. Match the notches front, back, sleeve head, side seam and ease in the sleeve.
tops finished just the finishing touches the elastic and the buttons to go on at the end um, I'm going to start working on the skirt what I have done is before I've put the elastic in the top I've tried it on to see what the floaty sleeve looks like and actually it I might choose it for another version because I thought it might make me look a bit like all one square shape but it's really nice and elegant The dress has pockets obviously you don't have to have them if you don't want to but who doesn't like a dress with pockets so you put the pockets on you have the one centimeter seam allowance and sew the four pockets using the markings next you're going to match the upper raw edge and the lower raw edge and then the pocket seams so you need to have pressed the pocket seams and find where the two pocket seams meet and same at the bottom match up the seams so that you get a really invisible inseam pocket and then follow the shape of your pocket. Your stitch line will start at the top. Just go one centimetre into the pocket. You can forward and back there a little bit if you want to reinforce your pocket. Pivot, go round the pocket, back to your one centimetre seam allowance here. Uh, forward and back if you want to strengthen your pocket and then straight down. So this is your side seam and your pocket should be pressed inside so that it really is part of the side seam. Okay, time to start our gathering. The technique used in most patterns and it is the same in the freedom dress is to put two rows of gathering stitches around the top of your skirt so that your skirt becomes the same width as your top. You can do this in a different colour if you want to so that you can see the gathering threads if you need to pull any out at the end. Put your sewing machine on a long stitch and then start to add your gathering stitches without going forwards and backs, backwards at the beginning. <laughs> With your top inside out, you can pull your skirt through and match the side seams. Once you've got your skirt gathered, mine's a little bit too tight, so I'm going to redistribute some of those gathers and pin the sides and do that in two halves. So I can make sure that I've got the same amount of gathers as on the front as the back. Check your machine is back to its shortest stitch, not on the long gather stitch. Have your gathers facing up and you might also find it useful to have a little pair of tweezers just to manipulate and move along any of the gathering ridges. So the place you're looking to sew is down there. You can see where my stitch line is. Just go over it a little bit more to show you. And as I was going, I could just keep moving the stitches. So I've got a really even gather between those two rows. From the right side, I've got a really nice even gather, but I have just got that stitch which is just holding it down 
So I'm going to pull that out and it will really release it and give a really nice finish. So I'm going to pull out that last gathering thread, the one that's below my stitch line. And you'll see the difference it makes. You get this beautiful even gather because I've not got any folds or anything along that edge. The final stage is to add the last tier to your skirt so I'm just going to readjust these I've used a cord technique on here which you will find on my gathering video if you'd like to check that out it's a way of having a stronger thread to pull on for longer gathers I'm just going to make sure that I'm getting close to the length of the skirt and then I can start to evenly distribute this row of gathers. Before I attach this skirt to the top of the skirt, I'm going to hem it because I think that just having this under my machine means I can control the hem more rather than the whole weight of a dress slopping off a machine. So I'm going to press up the hem. I'm going to do a double folded hem, press it up once, turn and press it up again and then top stitch. I don't know whether I want to top stitch this. I don't want to have a, a straight line running across very curvy circular lines. So I'm going to um, slip stitch or whip stitch the hem of this so that it's invisible. My dress is all finished. I've just got all of the finishing touches now left to do. So that's the sleeve elastics, the buttons on the front, and I am choosing to hand sew the hem so that I don't get a top stitch running through my beautiful multicoloured pattern. So this is the Freedom Dress. I've chose the elasticated sleeve, um, the plain neck, but you can continue um, with the ties there. It's got a gathered waist, really gently gathered and inseam pockets. I've got one tier on here. I have sized down. So I have cut a size 10 and so I really looked quite carefully at the measurements and I also looked at the amount of ease and I wanted a dress that had that sort of flowing look but didn't look oversized. If you're looking for a tiered dress in this kind of style but maybe you want something different on the neck, I made a little list of patterns that are very similar. If you use the hashtag tiered dress, you'll see lots and lots and lots of that buffet dress, tiered dress style. You can try the Lyra. Uh, Tilly and the Buttons Lyra pattern that has a collar, very similar style to this but it has long sleeves as well. There is the Nova midi dress so that's um, quite free and easy fitting with tiers. A Hinterland from So Liberated that's got a button feature down the front and a, and a round scoop neck. You can have that with sleeves or sleeveless. There is a pattern by Liberty called Natasha that's really similar to this with um, lots of tiers on the bottom. It's got a sleeveless top. There is a McCall 7948, which has two different skirt options. So there's the gathered skirt. If, if that gathered skirt style isn't your thing, then you can do the, a similar shape, but with a pleated waist. So that's a little bit different to look at. There is the Pauline Alice Ibby dress, which is really got huge volume in it and a, and a very different sort of style, really bohemian style. But if you use hashtag tear dress, you'll find lots of patterns. I'll tag those patterns below so you can go and have a look at them if you want to and you can also take a look at the Minerva makers and what they've made which is always a really inspirational way to choose a pattern. If you've made the Freedom Dress by Wardrobe by Me we would love to see which fabrics you've chosen and which style you chose and how you've styled it for yourself to wear in your wardrobe. I've used the Minerva uh, exclusive fabric this is the viscose um, chalet which has got a really good movement for adding tears. You could make this in a light cotton lawn, but obviously you're not going to get that same sort of drape that you get um, with a chalet and a fabric that has more movement. Do call back soon for more sew alongs and check out Minerva TV for tutorials and learn to sew uh, videos and sew alongs from other makers. 
Thanks very much for watching. See you again soon.